Welcome to A Perfect Place to Start. I have some fun DIYs planned for you today, so let's go on inside and get started. So on a recent shopping trip at Dollar Tree, I finally found the Dollar Tree fences. I was super excited to pick these up. I've never DIY'd with them before, but I thought I would try it out in today's video. So you get to come along crafting with me with these products for the first time. But we're gonna start out with this planter box that I got at Hobby Lobby. I went ahead and covered it with some antique Waverly wax. I then am going to use one of these fence pieces. I'm using a white crayon just to kind of mark the sections where I want to cut. Now I have a couple different tools here I have a miter I have some miter shears and I have some heavy-duty scissors I wasn't able to cut like the bottom pieces of the fence with my scissors or the stake pieces with my scissors but the miter shears worked really well and then my scissors were able to cut the more pliable sections of the fence in between so you're probably going to need just a couple different um, tools here to cut these if you don't have any miter shears you can definitely use wire cutters and they will also work just as well. But we're going to cut off any of the excess pieces that we don't need at the edge of our box. We want this to sit flush with our box. We're also going to cut off the stake pieces at the bottom because we don't need those for this project. We're going to add some E6000 and some hot glue for a more permanent hold and a right away hold. Now I did have to really hold these plastic pieces onto the wood pieces just because they are not like a solid piece on the back and so you want to make sure that you hold on to it really well to make sure it's adhered with your hot glue before you lift up. But that is it for this super simple project. I'm going to style it with some plants I had on hand. Let me know what you guys think about this one. This was definitely my favorite of the day. You can't turn the tide Let the water go where it wants so this project ends up being a rather large project and so the angle of my like recording is a little different than normal but I wanted to make sure that you could see the whole project. So we're going to go ahead and take off these stems from our planter uh, fence. We're going to go ahead and use our miter shears here because I am not able to use scissors, at least the ones I had. Again, you could use some wire cutters if you need to. Um, it is a pretty heavy duty like piece of plastic for those pieces as well as these end pieces where I'm cutting right now. Um, I also had to use miter shears for that. But again, the inside, you're able to use some scissors. So I want this fence piece to sit along the bottom portion of this um, framed piece. Now I got this framed wood piece. It's just a blank wood piece from Hobby Lobby. Um, you can pick these up for 40% off. It's really large, so there's a lot that you could do with this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just cut off these kind of bigger pieces and we're going to glue them to the bottom of our wooden frame piece. So I'm just going to use a mixture of hot glue again and some um, E6000. I picked up these little tiny bottles of E6000 when I was at Hobby Lobby. If I can find them on Amazon, I'll link them for you in my description box. But I really liked using these because I don't use a lot of E6000. And so this was really nice because um, when I was done, I could just kind of throw it away. It's the size of a super glue tube so that was really awesome and I used about one and a half tubes for all the projects today. I felt like that was a really great deal. I think I paid four dollars so I'll see if I can find them on Amazon and link it down in my description box. Once I get all the pieces cut I'm going to go ahead and start adding my glue. I'm going to put my E6000 here at the bottom and then I'm going to also add some hot glue. Once I get that stuck to my board and I feel like it's in a good place, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the top of our fence piece and add a little bit of hot glue at the top of those fence pieces just so that it is flush with our wooden project piece. Now I had a different thought in mind when I started this project, so we're going to add some Spanish moss here at the bottom. I was originally going with a garden look here, but I really didn't like how the flowers looked. If I tried to put them behind the fence, I felt like the stems kind of got in the way, and if I put them in front of the fence, I really didn't like how that looked. So I decided to do something totally different. Now I'd already had the Spanish moss glued on, as you can see, so if you want to recreate this project, 
guys, there is definitely two ways to do it. You can leave just the fence on the wooden board and then not add the Spanish moss, or you can do it like I did and add the Spanish moss. But what we're going to do here is we're going to add the same element on the other side of our board. So following the same process I did before with the fence piece, I went ahead and cut it and now we're going to add our glue. So this time I decided to add the glue to the board. I went flush against the edge of our board with the hot glue and then I'm going to take my little E6000 bottle and I'm just going to run it along where my hot glue was and I'm going to stick my fence piece down. Once I have a really good hold there, then I'll go back again up to the top and add a little bit of hot glue in just a few different places. So so that it lays flush. Now I think this would be really gorgeous just with the fence pieces. So if you don't want to add the Spanish moss, you definitely don't have to. But if you do want to add the Spanish moss, you're going to follow that same process again on this side at the bottom of the fencing piece. And then here it is styled for you guys. Let me know what you think about this one. Somebody told me don't pretend cause everyone could use a friend sometimes. So I wanted to do some unique projects with these fences today and so I decided to make an art project with them. I took these two canvases, they come in a two pack at Dollar Tree, they're five dollars and we're going to do an art piece with it. So I'm going to take one of the canvases and I'm going to lay the fencing at the top. We're going to take some black spray paint that I had on hand. This is actually chalkboard spray paint uh, but it works really wonderful. I really like the finish that it gives even though I'm not even going for a chalkboard look here. Um, but we're going to go ahead and spray all of the pieces and then we're going to have a void there for our white pieces of fence. I do go ahead and cover all of the canvas with black um, so the only void there is our fence piece. So then we're going to take our other canvas and we're going to do the same process only this time we're going to take our fence piece and we're going to lay it at the bottom and we're going to spray paint our entire uh, canvas with the black spray paint again. This is where one of those spray paint tents would have came in really handy. It was a fairly windy day today. I thought I could get away with it, but it was super windy. Um, but I really loved how it turned out. I can't wait to show you guys what it ended up looking like. So I highly recommend doing gloves for this project because your hands are going to look like this. Good times. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but tip for you, wear gloves. These are going to be really cute wall art pieces. Let's go take a look at what they look like. So for this project, I decided to make a planter. I picked up these wooden pieces at Hobby Lobby. They were like $2.49 for two. I'm going to go ahead and use hot glue and wood glue, and we're going to assemble them into a box shape. So I wasn't able to find the Dollar Tree wood blocks. They are a little bigger than these wood blocks, so if you can find them at Dollar Tree, definitely pick those up instead. It'll make you a bigger planter box, and I was kind of disappointed at the size of this one, so definitely pick up those blocks if you can find them. So we're just going to make these into a square shape and then we're going to take a one last wooden piece and we're going to glue it on the bottom. That way we have a bottom to our planter. So I am using some wood glue here and some hot glue for a permanent hold and a quick hold so we can continue on our project without having to wait for it to dry. So I'm using my miter shears again to take off the excess pieces. We're going to remove the stake pieces. We're also going to cut this fence piece into four pieces. Pieces and we're going to be using just the decorative part on the inside. I had to use my miter shears to cut the bottom and the top of the fence pieces, but then I'm able to use my scissors to cut out the decorative piece in the middle. So um, again, depending on what you have on hand as far as supplies go, you might want to pick up some miter shears or you might want to use some wire cutters. But we're going to go ahead and do the same process for all four of our pieces of fence. 
So once I have the decorative piece cut out, then I'm going to go back with some scissors and I'm going to trim up any of the loose ends. This did take a while and I don't know that I did that great of a job of it, um, but you kind of want to shave it off. I tried to use my X-Acto knife and I didn't think that that worked as well as my scissors. Um, you just want to give it a round shape at the top and the bottom because you don't want it to look like you cut it apart. So you're just trying to kind of shape it up and give it the shape of that you want. So we're going to go ahead and do this process and all four of our pieces as well. And then once we have all of those cut out, we're going to go ahead and go back to our box. We're using some antique Waverly wax here to give it a stain, but honestly any stain will do. Um, you could also use a brown paint and water, which is one of my very favorite staining techniques um, if you don't have any antique wax on hand. Once our box is dry, we're gonna go back and take our pieces that we cut out and we're going to glue them to our box. So I am using E6000 and hot glue for this process. This was a little difficult given that the piece of fence kind of sticks up from the box. Like I said before, that it has like a raised edge on it in the back of the fencing. And so it sticks up and it doesn't adhere to the wood project as well. So you definitely have to give it a good push to make sure that the hot glue glue portion it has stuck on really well so you can move on to the next piece. I also um, suggest gluing the middle of your fence piece that way it has a secure hold in the middle just like I'm doing here we're going to add some E6000 and some hot glue again and I definitely recommend pushing down and holding on to that for as long as you need to because this is not one of those rush through it type of deals. You're going to have to hold on and make sure that it is adhered to your wood piece but we're going to go ahead and do that around all four pieces of our box and then that is it for this project I do think it turns out super cute as a planter let me know what you guys think here it is styled for you guys I can feel the sun and how the wind makes way across Take a breath Let me be a part of some 